Hi everyone, today I'm going to be unboxing the new Tier Time Up Mini 2, which is their second version of the Up Mini, which is their budget model. The build size is a 12 centimeter cube, very much like the old Up Minis. The Z resolution, uh, it can do between 0.15 and 0.4 millimeters. It has automatic nozzle detection, it has a touch screen, it's also Wi-Fi enabled, and it has a HEPA filter. Now the HEPA filter is one of the main reasons that they are releasing these new machines because it's allowing them to get into schools because the HEPA filter obviously means that it's cleaning the air while it's printing and of course that means that it's safer for the children. On the front here they've got the name of it and some of the features. On the side they've got a big QR code which is unfortunately covered with a sticker. On the front they just have some nice um, line drawings of the machine itself. On this side there is a cutout in the side of the box, I'm not sure what that is, um, we'll find out in a second. Um, on the top it's just got their website uh, and whatnot, and there's nothing on the bottom. So without further ado let's get stuck into it. So trusty Stanley knife, got to cut through these and the second one. Okay, let's cut the top open. So within the plain brown cardboard box, they actually have a white box which contains the machine itself. Uh, so I'm going to put this brown box on the ground, lift out the white one and put it on the desk. Okay, so this is the box that was inside the brown box. Um, it's quite neat, it's covered in white, um, and it has these really, really awesome sort of object cloud um, graphics on the front. The other thing I can tell you is that it smells like brand new electronics, and you cannot get anything better than that smell. There's a sticker on the front here. Um, I find it quite odd that um, it says, shall not be torn, but the adhesive is so weak that I, I literally just lifted that straight off. And in fact, I'm pretty sure I can open this without disturbing that sticker. There we go, yep. Yep, that sticker does nothing. So we'll keep opening this one. So, this is what it looks like on top. So there's a little bit of foam. There's a sample of green ABS Plus. Uh, some normal PLA. Uh, and another roll of PLA. Underneath that, three perf boards some more foam padding uh, and then the machine is under there. So I'm going to grab this brown box out and we'll have a look what's in there. So for anyone who has an up machine or has used them before, um, they all come with a little brown box like this and this is full of all the accessories that you need to use your machine properly. So we open up the front and we have a pair of gloves in the top. Uh, there is a calibration card. That's actually really cool. So a calibration card um, is basically something that you put underneath the nozzle um, and you bring the nozzle down and you basically move it and once you feel it grabbing that's the indication that you're at the right Z calibration. So that'll come in very handy when we're using the machine. Then we have a pair of safety goggles. We have the power cord to the power brick. We have the power brick itself. This is input of 240 volts. One and a half amps and it's outputting nine volts at 4.74 amps. Then underneath that um, we get a Ziploc bag with some accessories. So we have the PDFE tube which we use to route the filament to the machine. Uh, we have the wrench for taking the nozzle on and off. We have some Allen keys, spare bolts and actually a spare nozzle. Under that we have the USB cable. We have the famous German yellow scraper. In all 3D printers that I've ever used, ever unboxed, this is the best scraper that you can ever have. Um, I don't know why, it just works the best. Under that we have the side pliers. These are very good because they have the sharp edge at the top and they're actually angled so that you can get right in close up against stuff. And then the last bit that we have is the extruder. I've heard really good things about this extruder, so let's have a look. So this extruder is a bit of a tank. It looks like it's probably about twice the size of a normal up extruder. I don't really know why that is. I can't really see much that's um, that new or anything that, that's sort of different to what we've had normally. We have a cooling fan on top with a really nice guard on top of that. Um, we have the normal pin connector to the machine itself. There's a plate here and I'm assuming that that's the plate that's used to actually snap it in place. We have the nozzle here and the new heater block. Uh, and then on this side we actually have control of the vent. So if you push that down the vent will 
close, you open it, and the vent will open. So I do, I do like this vent. Um, the old UPS had a vent that was basically a, a little handle, and you'd turn the handle and it would kind of snap open or snap closed. Unfortunately, because those handles were quite thin through the middle, um, they would snap off every so often, and then you'd have to print a new um, extruder head fan shroud for your UP. So we'll pack that up. Okay, so now we get to the interesting bit. We're going to take the printer out of the box. So on top here, there's just some foam. You can take that out. And there it is. So if I flip it over, that's how it's all being kept in there. So we've got the printer here and then the caddy next to it. So we'll take the caddy out and have a look at that first. So judging by the weight of this, I'm assuming that the 500 gram roll that comes with the machine is already in here. So. so this is the print caddy itself. So it's a injection molded um, spool holder with a toolkit drawer on the front. You can put um, a few tools in here, basically anything that you use quite a bit, you can store in here so that you don't lose it and so it's easy to get to with the machine. So on the front here, um, it's just got the tier time logo and a little rubber piece with a hole in it. So your filament goes through there and then into uh, your printer. So to open the caddy, you simply squeeze these and lift up. And your filament roll sits inside there. So inside, it looks like there's a pair of rollers that your filament will sit on. So we'll pack that back up, put the lid back on, and take a look at the printer itself. So the printer is in a plastic bag. So to save dropping it, I'm going to put the box on the ground, lift the machine out and put it on the desk. So here is the UP Mini 2. So down here we have an initialize button um, and then just here we have the front door which opens. Now one thing I do like about the UP Mini 2 is that it actually has the same door on the back and if you open that one, that one opens up too. So you can actually see completely through the machine um, which is pretty cool. And it also means that for schools, you can view it from both sides. So you can sit it on a desk um, and students can look through the front and also look through the back. One of the other cool things down here is the touch screen. So on the old up minis, you would have to connect via USB to do anything with the machine apart from initialize. Whereas with this touch screen, it means that you should in theory, be able to do everything on this machine that you need to without the need of a USB connection. So I'm going to take this wrapping off. I'm going to plug it in and we're going to have a look at this touch screen up close. So to put the extruder into the Up Mini 2, we have to raise the handle, open the front door, and this top panel actually comes off. We lift the cable out of the way, the extruder pushes in, we push it down, and it snaps into place. We can then connect the power cord, put the lid back on, put the handle back down, close the front door, and it should be ready to go. So to power up the Up Mini, we simply get the power brick and the power cord and plug it in. So that sound that you can hear there is actually the HEPA filter. So the first thing that you need to do with any UP machine is initialize the printer. What this does is it homes all the axes and gets the machine ready to be used. So from the touch screen on the front, we simply click initialize, click yes, and it's initializing. So that beat means that it's initialized and it's ready to go. So the first thing that the quick start guide recommends that you do is calibrate the machine. Because it has automatic calibration, you shouldn't have to do much. From the touch screen at the front, you click calibrate, click the auto button, and it's now going to auto calibrate the machine. So to get the filament caddy ready, all we have to do is take the lid off, The PTFE tube that comes with the machine slots into the little rubber bit at the front and then you get your filament, you unroll it a little bit and something that I found a bit tricky is that you then have to try and fit your hand inside so that you can feed the filament up through the PTFE tube.
So once, once you've fed the filament through and it comes out the end of the PDFE tube, you can put the lid back on and the caddy is ready to go. So they recommend putting the caddy at the back of the machine, feeding it through the hole at the top of the back door. So once you've got the caddy at the back of the machine and you've fed the filament through the back of the machine and into the extruder, it's time to load the filament. So from the touch screen down here, you click material. So we've got an ABS material, 500 grams of it. So we hit extrude. And if you have a look at the top left corner, you'll see that the nozzle is currently at 23 degrees, but it will slowly increase to about 270 and then it'll extrude into the build chamber. So now that we're ready to print something on the UP Mini 2, I've got the laptop out, I've got the USB cable. So one thing to bear in mind with the UP Mini 2 is that it only works with the new UP Studio software. It won't work with UP 2.18 or anything below that. Unfortunately, the UP Studio software isn't as user friendly as UP version 2.8 or below, but it's what we have to stick with. So I'm gonna print a Cloud Strife, which is actually an STL that was designed and built through the Maker's Empire 3D CAD software, which is available on iPad. Um, and then we're going to send that to the UP Mini and see how it goes. It's gonna be printing with a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, minimum infill, and it's going to be on the normal setting. So one of the rumors that I've heard is that you can unplug the UP Mini 2 from the power, plug it back in, and it will actually be able to resume a print. This hasn't been available on any previous UPS, but I'm gonna test it right now. As you can see, it is printing. I'm going to go over and turn it off at the wall socket, flick it back on, and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so flicking it off in three, two, one. And we'll flick it back on. So it doesn't look like it's resumed the print, but we'll reinitialize and see what happens. So as we can see, it will actually want to resume the print. So if I click the tick button, looks like it's gonna reheat and continue the print. So as we can see, it is now resuming that print. So there are a few disappointments with the UP Mini 2, the first of which being the filament caddy. It's designed to hold a 500 gram reel, which is a fairly small one. What I'll most likely end up doing is simply getting a turntable, sitting my reels on that, and then using them with the UP Mini 2. The other disappointment with the spool caddy is that it's quite difficult to actually get the filament through the little rubber pieces at the front and feed them into the PTFE tube. If you have big hands like me, you have to fit them down inside the filament caddy and that can be difficult. One of the other disappointments is with the extruder on the UP Mini. Earlier I was talking about the vent on this extruder and I mentioned that it was now a slidable vent cover rather than the flippable vent cover on the old extruder designs. One of the downsides of that is that from the front of the machine there are no visual cues to let you know whether it's open or closed. One of the other disappointments with the UP Mini 2 is that the slidable vent on the extruder is very difficult to get to once the printer is initialized. Unfortunately on the touch screen at the front there's no jog options which means that you're not able to move any of the axes around to get easier access to that vent. Some of the things that I like about the UP Mini 2 are especially the price. It's being sold for pretty much the same price as the original UP Minis, which are about $800. The second thing I really like about this UP Mini 2 is the aluminium handle on top. This is gonna make it very easy to transport for schools, 
people who do any sort of demonstrations and for anyone who runs a mobile makerspace. One of the other things I do like is having a window on the front and the back, which means that if you have it on a desk, people can see it from both sides. One of the things to remember about the Up Mini 2 are that the mechanics inside are actually pretty much the same as the original Up Mini, which means that the speed and the build quality are pretty much going to be the same. All in all, I like the Up Mini 2. It's a definite improvement on the original Up Mini. I think the filament caddy is a bit of an inconvenience. I'll be swapping to a normal turntable as soon as I'm finished with this 500 gram roll. But apart from that, it's a really good machine. Thank you for watching. I suck at outros. See ya.